Now, dynamics is the, uh, the other branch of physics. If you were to study physics, you would probably choose either experimental physics, testing, or you would use or you would choose theoretical physics, which is uh, a prediction of future motion. The prediction of motion involves uh, quantities uh, that we discussed before, uh, distance, uh, velocity, time. In addition, you have quantities that uh, are characteristic of whatever you're measuring. So mass, force, moment of inertia, charge, Q, all of these things are particular qualities of uh, motion. In kinematics, you only trace the path or the trajectory of motion. In dynamics, you must include uh, mass and force and other um, qualities in order to predict the motion. Uh, relative motion is invalid, and we're going to show that. We've already shown it with Newton's uh, bucket and with the uh, hitchhiker ex experiment. The observer and reference frame dependence means that we have a lab or earth frame uh, as, a, as an absolute frame. And we've used, as I said, the bucket and the hiker. And we will use an electromagnetic experiment, the Faraday experiment, to show to show that uh, only the earth, only the lab frame can be used in make in making predictions. So dynamics is always prediction, and kinematics is always measurement. Now, in the lower left, we see an example of. Uh, how we're going to apply the laws of motion, how we're going to derive them. If you were a hiker hiking through the mountains and you wanted to go from A to B, there are many different paths you could use. You could use the red path, which goes over the mountain. You could use this one, which goes through a tunnel in the mountain. Or you could use the blue path from A to B. In fact, there's an infinite number of ways you could get from A to B. And let's say we want to know what is the fastest time that gets me from A to B. So this question was posed to mathematicians uh, hundreds of years ago. And they came up with this law called um, the law of calculus or variational principle. What it says is if I take a quantity which represents the energy, the Lagrangian L, and that consists of the temp of the kinetic minus the potential energy, and it depends on the location Q. Q stands for so, some coordinate system, the velocities, and the time. So we need a clock. If we consider all of the paths that go from A to B in this example. And we ask, what is the shortest time between them? Then this variational principle is set to zero. And when it is calculated and simplified, it, it leads to what are called the Euler-Lagrange equations, which are these. So by performing these derivatives and applying it to the Lagrangian t minus v, you get the equation that predicts what is the shortest time between a and b. And this is quite an astounding accomplishment. It says that something I couldn't possibly do physically is done mathematically. We can predict what is the shortest path between two points if we know the energy uh, change in between the two points. Now, the thing that they made a mistake on, this was done by math mathematicians. They used generalized coordinates. They assumed you could use any coordinate system that you want. It turns out, however, from experiments, uh, Newton's bucket, for example, that you must use the lab frame. So the mistake that is made by, uh, by uh, mainstream is in using arbitrary coordinates, um, uh, arbitrary reference system, 
you must use the earth system. Okay, this is uh, something I borrowed from Austin's uh, presentation. The only thing I want to uh, point out is right here where Fred Hoyle says, it is also possible to take any point as the center, even in dynamics. No, not true. As I just uh, described, you must use the lab frame uh, as your uh, reference point, as your center of uh, calculation. <clears throat> 